Manipulatives are an easy way to show trigonometric functions in a visual representation. For example, we can see that sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent are able to be represented in these manipulatives. We can use these to prove a trigonometric identity, like so. Here we have the quantity of tangent theta plus cotangent theta squared equals cosecant squared theta times secant squared theta. Although it looks complex, with the help of basic trig identities, this can be proven easily. Since this side is more complex, we'll start working with this one. Since this side is raised to the power of 2, it can be rewritten as the quantity of tangent theta plus cotangent theta multiplied by the quantity of tangent theta plus cotangent theta. We will now use the FOIL method to multiply this equation. We start out with the front tangent theta times tangent theta, and we get tangent squared theta plus the outside tangent theta times cotangent theta, which is, well, cotangent theta times tangent theta. And then we get, well, cotangent theta times tangent theta, which is the same thing, so we'll add in a 2. And then the, the last one, cotangent theta times cotangent theta, which is cotangent squared theta. This is getting a bit messy, so let's clean it up a bit. Using quotient identities, tangent theta is really sine theta divided by cosine theta, and cotangent is cosine theta divided by sine theta. When we multiply these together, the sines will cancel out and the cosines will cancel out, meaning this all goes away, leaving us with the number 2. Using Pythagorean identities, tangent squared theta is secant squared theta minus 1, and cotangent squared theta is cosecant squared theta minus 1. When we substitute those in, we get secant squared theta minus 1 plus 2 plus cosecant squared theta minus 1. As you can see, there are two negative 1s and a positive 2, which cancels those out leaving us with a similar but not yet exact equation of secant squared theta plus cosecant squared theta. This might be difficult to work with, however, using reciprocal identities is very easy. Secant squared theta is really just 1 over cosine squared theta, and secant squared theta is really 1 over sine squared theta. So if we substitute those in, we have 1 over cosine squared theta plus 1 over sine squared theta. Since these fractions are being added together, there must be a common denominator. The common denominator of these fractions are sine squared theta times cosine squared theta. To the left fraction, sine squared theta over sine squared theta will be multiplied to it. And for the right side, cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta will be multiplied to it. This doesn't change any of the fractions because these are just glorified versions of 1. Time to multiply. Since nothing cancels out, we can just multiply them together. Sine squared theta times cosine squared theta is sine squared theta times cosine squared theta. And cosine squared theta times 1 is cosine squared theta. Since anything times 1 is itself, we can just remove this 1. And for the left side, it's the same deal. Nothing cancels out. So we multiply them together. Sine squared theta times cosine squared theta is sine squared theta times cosine squared theta. And sine squared theta times 1 is sine squared theta. Since anything times 1 is still itself, we remove this one. Now it's time to combine. Since they have a common denominator, we can combine the numerators. So now we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And as you know, with Pythagorean identities, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is now 1. So now we have 1 over sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Now it's time to split up this fraction into two equal parts. We have 1 over sine squared theta times 1 over cosine squared theta. And you might be able to see the end result. 1 over sine squared theta is really cosecant squared theta, and 1 over cosine squared theta is really secant squared theta. And as you remember from the start, 
the quantity of tangent theta plus cotangent theta squared equals cosecant squared theta times secant squared theta. Using basic trigonometric identities and trigonometric algebra, we were able to prove that this identity was indeed true. But why does it make sense? Well, because trigonometry. But if the trigonometry doesn't make sense, then the colors will. Just like puzzle pieces, manipulatives fit into one another to create similar shapes. For example, sine theta over cosine theta makes tangent theta. And when you mix yellow and red together, they make orange, just like how colors work. And with even more proof, if you flip this over, it's simply the same exact thing, sine over cosine. But wait, there's more. When you combine a one with a sine theta and a one with a cosine theta, you'll make two new trigonometric functions. One over sine theta is cosecant theta, and one over cosine theta is secant theta. With the colors, blue mixed with yellow gets green, and blue mixed with red gets purple. Finally, on the back, it shows that cosecant was one over sine all along. And looky here, one over sine theta. And over here, secant was always one over cosine theta. And over here, what a shock, it's one over cosine theta. And if you mix two reds together, well, it'll just make another red. Simple as that. So there we go. We made more sense of these trigonometric manipulatives. And if you're still not satisfied, oh well. Hope you learned something.